focal trial of ablation being a methodology to deal with early diagnosis. Early diagnosis means that you come across prostate cancers when their size is small, probably less than half of a cubic centimeter of disease tissue. If you really analyze early diagnosed cancer, you usually have an index lesion, which is a bigger volume of cancer than if there are other areas of cancer within the prostate, they're usually much smaller and they can fall into the category of insignificant cancer. Duke Bond's a gentleman who I've worked with now for a number of years. The idea here is you only treat the focus of the index lesion, which is the large lesion. And it appears that measuring the prostate by all the parameters that we have, there's not progression of disease. If you get into an area where you have a cancer that you know it's there, but you feel it's low grade and low volume, one of the other is a technique called active surveillance. Active surveillance means you monitor these patients very closely and then when the PSA or the PCA3 start to change, you take action. So it, it's either active surveillance, a very small percentage of actually do this. <clears throat> they opt for a treatment strategy, which is usually radical prostatectomy with some of the problems that can come with that. <clears throat> regardless of whether it's all prostatectomy or robotic prostatectomy. So it may be that a reasonable compromise is a focal approach by identifying the index lesion, and you can identify small volumes of prostate cancer, as I was telling you, by angiogenesis, ultrasound, color doppler, power doppler. So the candidate for this treatment would be somebody who wants to maintain his quality of life and isn't willing to risk the issues of erectile dysfunction or urinary control problems. The cancer is localized in small volume and you have to have a fairly rigorous follow-up study. So by using color Doppler and by choosing patients that only have a portion of the prostate involved, it opens up some options. So this patient was followed over uh, three years. All of a sudden, something changed. The angiogenesis that occurred related to this uh, was enhanced. What do you do? Well, you biopsy these areas. And yes, I know you're looking at this as well. This is where the blood supply comes into the prostate, but you can see the disparity between these two fairly easily and color doppler picks up blood flow. This was proven by biopsy now to have changed. And remember I said it was at least in six, and it was a small volume six. Now it's a seven that's involving 90% of the biopsy tissue. Focal uh, cryoablation was used, and this area of the prostate was not treated. There were no lesions that were identified here, but this area was, and it was more than just this area. Half the prostate was treated by putting cryoprobes into this area and taking those temperatures down to minus 40 degrees centigrade. And yes, the neurovascular bundle here was probably injured in this process, but you also have a neurovascular bundle here that wasn't touched, <clears throat> and this freeze did not go to the area where the sphincter is because the tumor wasn't there, it was in the base of the prostate. So you can see a freeze coming down here and taking this tissue out right here. And so this is what makes up focal cryoablation. The characteristics of success when looked at as stable tumor markers is very high. Biopsy negative is very high. And potency preservation in this group is higher than any other treatment, bar none, for prostate cancer. The average age is this, in the mid 60s to the higher 60s, I guess. And complications are minimal because very little of the prostate is actually treated. And 
patients who have focal ablation are back in the saddle, so to speak, within days. It's minimally invasive. It offers a high rate of potency, preservation of urinary control. It fills the void between uh, active surveillance and radical therapy. 